a chronic pattern. I'm, I'm going to uh, maybe give sort of three general ideas. One idea is, is uh, true for any system whatsoever, right? So someone comes in and they have a full body pattern. And let's say, let's use the example of scoliosis since it's a really interesting and complex one. And in terms of this class, it's focusing on the um, lumbar spine and pelvis and sacrum. A lot of uh, scoliosis patterns are absolutely involve the pelvis and the sacrum and might also include a um, difference in leg length or something like that. Right? So the more segments, the more aspects that are in highly involved in a pattern, so scoliosis is, there's lots and lots of different components to it. It's usually wise to um, treat the whole aiming for small amounts of change in most of the segments rather than I'm just going to really, really work on that relationship between the pelvis and the femur and pelvis and the femur. When that gets neutral, then I'll go to the next step of the sacrum lumbar spine. Right? So rather than looking for a lot of change in one aspect, it's wiser to look for one degree of change in each of the little components, which in when you add it up in total, when they stand back up again, you'll have, you'll have sort of bought their system a lot of change overall. So that's, that's true of any system, any complex pattern. Is that the component about how much change can we expect, expect, certainly as we age, we dry out. <laughs> when we're born, we're really watery and really squishy, and our connective tissue is, is very well hydrated. And one of the aspects of aging is that we get drier and drier, and our connective tissue um, with that often becomes less pliable, less supple. Also with something like a scoliosis, you might have um, bone changes, like you were saying, the bone density and oftentimes the shape of the bones will remodel as part of that. And um, it's another place where I probably won't, we won't see uh, a big overt change in the overall zigzag shape, but you can very much hope for lessening the shape altogether. So you take the whole shape a little bit closer to neutral. It's very likely they'll still have their pattern, but if you can ease it all a little bit towards neutral, it's often um, quite powerful, the change you can get for people. I'm thinking of a couple of clients that I have had with scoliosis, one woman in particular, who's in her late 60s, so not the same as 91, but late 60s, where um, after we worked some with her torso, pelvis, and some of the spine ribcage work that we teach in another class, you know, she came back and she was like, I was able to wash my hair without pain. I was able to, um, you know, pull my get get the sleeve of my sweater. All these sort of little day-to-day -day things that, when you have a chronic condition, they're the mundane tasks that we're having to to wrestle with. Those tasks really drains your energy and your heart in a lot of ways. You know, so giving them back that kind of freedom, that kind of sort of freedom of movement, is it's really big. It's really, really big. So the elderly, you want to absolutely focus. So now elderly in particular, very much asking them about bone health and, and where their bone health is. Um, if you have concerns about doing this work with people, we talked yesterday about postpartum women as a particular category. Um, you could also think about people sort of post-op. What, are, what, are, what kinds of, what's the range of stuff? I often will ask them, what kind of daily exercise do you do? You know, and if they're telling you that they're, certainly they're like, I'm going to my CrossFit classes. But even if they're saying like, I go to my water aerobics three times a week, or I do these, I, I, I gauge my work, often it's easy based on what their daily exercise is, and what they've been okay to do from the, 
medical community because I know the forces that I'm using with them are way under whatever their body is managing in an aerobics class or uh, you know, certainly if they're running, their body is taking a measure of force into the system that is much bigger than what I'm going to do with my hands. That said, there's always the open channel of communication. If anything I'm doing feels uncomfortable or edgy to you, let me know and we'll change what we're doing. 